Good day and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm S.R. Haddon. Today we're reviewing the DT D3 Pro Super Cardioid Microphone. I will omit the music tests in this review and focus only on spoken word slash dialogue. As always, check the screen to find the real-time information of the equipment I'm using and when I'm using it. Full disclosure, I bought this microphone with my own money and am in no way affiliated with Deity. These are my own opinions based solely on my own subjective experience. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, some company history. This is going to be a short one. Deity Microphones is a spin-off company that emerged in 2018 from the well-loved professional lighting company, Aperture. Deity's first mic was the S-Mic 2, which is an all-brass weather-resistant shotgun microphone that did very well on the market. I have the S-Mic 2 and will be reviewing it soon. Shortly after the release of the S-Mic 2, Deity launched their V-Mic series, and that included the D3 Pro, among others. And that's the company history. <clears throat> now on to the D3 Pro in particular. The D3 Pro is actually a world first, and I'll show you why. The D3 Pro, right here, as you can see the tip pointing at my face, is a super cardioid mic that is made of aluminum. It has a stepless gain knob right on the mic, so you can dial in your gain settings on the fly. And that knob is a world first, and it's protected by a clever little bump guard so you don't change your settings by accident. It also features a low cut button that toggles between a 75 hertz and 150 hertz high pass or low cut. That button is also a power button that sleeps until it's woken up by powering on your camera or device. It sports a lithium ion rechargeable battery that will last for up to 51 hours after fully charging it from empty to full in only two hours. It charges through a USB port right on the side here. It is extremely light. It weighs only 72 grams or 0.159 of a pound. Crazy light. The measurements are, oh, let me just grab my crusty old measuring tape here. You know, this measuring tape was manufactured in 1847. I picked it up at a cute little curiosity shop in Castle Rock called Needful Things back in 93. <sighs> anyway, let's do the measurements. About eight inches long by, uh, well, we're not even, we're not even three quarters of an inch wide. It has an output impedance of 200 ohms and a frequency range of 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which is perfect for dialogue or voiceovers. The basic kit comes with the mic, a Rycote cold shoe shock mount, which can also be pole mounted, a foam windshield, and a smart TRRS to TRRS coiled cable. All this packed into a really nice protective case. The mic connects directly to your camera or phone or recorder or whatever and the mic detects what you're plugged into. It's pretty smart. It then configures itself automatically. I mean, this guy can be plugged into a tablet or a laptop or even a body pack transmitter. If you plug it into a device that receives a stereo input, the mic will output in dual mono tracks. That's really cool. Optional items that you can get for the D3 Pro is a Rycote pistol grip, a shock mount, and a little device called the DXLR, which converts the 3.5 millimeter cable into an XLR output so that you can attach this guy to a boom pole for a proper indoor boom mic and output into a better recorder. It hibernates when it, there's no power. It detects the phantom power through the DXLR into the mic, turns it all on, Bob's your uncle. But how does it sound? Well, what do you think? As usual, I have not processed a sound in any way, except for a limiter if I get too loud. This is O Naturel. How about from further away? I've been running this about a foot from my mouth, so now I'm about definitely two feet now. So I'm at two feet from my mouth. Uh, I don't know if I had to crank it up here, but I've got this set at five on the dial. So right at half, I'm probably at around five also on my uh, Apollo Twin. Uh, so I'm currently running it through the from the mic into the coily cable into the DXLR 
And then from there, it's piped down an XLR cable and then into the Apollo Twin, where I've turned on phantom power and brought the input to about half. So this is the sound. I've kept the mic at, a, at about a foot above me and in the camera shot, so you can see it right here, as I said earlier. I've aimed the mic at the target area, which is just below my chin in this little area right here. And that's your target area that you'd want to aim a boom mic. This is the prime target for onset boom miking so that the audio doesn't change much when the bodies and heads move around. So as you aim it here, you, you can move around a bit and it's not going to be that bad as opposed to moving your head. See, like you can hear the difference, right? You hear that? But if I aim it here all the time, then it's always kind of the same, right? And then you, you can move your head around or the, or the subject that you're trying to mic and move their head around. So you always try to try to go right here. That's, that's where you want so that you don't get any odd comb filtering or anything like that. So how about testing it close up? Okay, this is the sound of the D3 Pro being used as a close voiceover mic. How does this sound? Are we getting the proximity effect? Okay, now for some additional examinations. Okay, so I took it off the boom here, and I'm holding it about, uh, I don't know, 8 inches from my mouth. And uh, we're going to do a little bit of the off-axis rejection. It's got a little interference tube here, so we're going to try and see how that works. So let's uh, throw on some pink noise on this little boom botics. That's the front, and here we are, right on the side. There's the back. There's the side again, and right in the front. Let's do a wind test now here. Wow. Yeah, wind is bad without this. We've got this little uh, pop screen on here. We're gonna have to go outside, so let's go. Okay, so we're outside right now. I uh, hiked about 4,400 kilometers up the side of the Himalayas <clears throat> to uh, find this house in this random backyard. So I'm using an, a Zoom H1 recorder and I've got the 3.5 millimeter plugged in here and I'm using this to record. I've got this set at uh, half on the H1 and half, so five on the Deity. And here's what it sounds like. The problem though is the wind. And if I take this off, so that's the sound without this. So now this is back on. Still hear that wind. But I'm not getting, it's not very windy today and I wish it was a bit windier so that I could get a good, uh, so I could show you what I mean. But uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to do this uh, with a fan to show you. I did hike up here with my boom, but uh, oh, we're hearing something out there. Someone's making something up here on the side of the mountain. Anyway, if I had my boom, I would show you, but uh, it's, it's, it's back at the log cabin that I stayed at, which is another maybe 650 kilometers uh, down the mountain. I was hoping to get more wind so I could show you what it's like um, and how badly this does in the wind. Uh, so maybe what I'll do is I'll get a fan back in the studio at the outpost and uh, we'll try it that way. All right. See you back in a warm studio. It's very cold up here. We didn't get good wind outside, so let's uh, let's try something else. Let's try using um, a fan. One sec. Let's get the Windermere 5000 running. Yeah, that's not good. That's on three. Okay. So that was on... Uh, that was on high there. So you get a little wind going on here. It's not good. So let's try doing this little guy. Okay, so I just put an aftermarket furry on here. And uh, 
It's kind of like a bubble bee, but a knockoff of a bubble bee. So let's uh, give this a shot on the fan three on the Windermere over here. That's not bad. I can't seem to get what it was doing uh, for me every other time I've used it outside. Sometimes you, if you have a switch or a knob or any kind of button or something on the side of a mic and you're out in the wind, what happens is that it uh, the wind will kind of come through and, and hit the mic capsule through the inside. So uh, putting a little bit of gaffer's tape over top to cover those usually does the trick. But this is actually working great. Okay, so I really thought that that was going to do a lot worse with Windermere over here. It didn't do so bad, so I can't seem to recreate what's been happening to me outside when I use it. Um, I really thought I'd have to pull out this road blimp. I mean, it's massive. And maybe next time we'll test that. This is the road blimp, and this is pretty awesome. But uh, I sometimes have to put this guy into this. Uh, due to the wind but I think I suspect that when that happens it's going through the button so I think if I throw some uh, gaffer's tape over top of that I should probably solve it in the future but who knows I couldn't recreate it sorry about that folks so there you have it analysis this is a really nifty mic it's perfect for on-camera run-and-gun situations it's light and small but not too small as to seem cheap and insignificant I really like the lows this captures Unlike some other mics in this class, which tend to be bright and don't have much body. I love the battery concept here. And assuming the battery enjoys a long life, as in years, then it's a perfect situation for many people. I always carry a power bank in my camera bag, so I can always charge it up on the go. But I don't think I'll ever need that. 51 hours of use per charge is plenty. As a boom mic, it's great. It does pick up more handling noise than I'd like, but you, you, if you're careful with your pull, it should be good. You can hear some noise from the microphone. It's not quiet. I don't know how they've done the electronics. I don't know if there's a, you know, it's a TRRS connection. I mean, it's not XLR, but I don't know if they're using 3-pin. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know how it's doing its thing, but it's a bit noisy. You can hear it. Um... Especially when you turn up the gain. I don't know what I have to do in post here. You're hearing it now. I have no idea what I have to boost it by or what I need to do in order to get that uh, to the to appropriate levels. And you'll be able to hear some noise. So why don't we right now listen to some noise? Because I don't know if we tested that. So let's do that. What do you think? I also noticed that there is definitely RF interference sometimes. It has aluminum housing, not brass, and I don't think it's got too much shielding. Keep in mind though that I'm immersed in a bordello of RF signal down here in the dungeon of the outpost. I've got an iPhone and two iPads, an iMac and uh, wireless Bluetooth, everything's keyboards and crap going everywhere. I've got amps and interfaces and rack gear and camera running all at the same time everything's going and bouncing around in here so it may be an unfair assessment but you know you should know it anyway there's lots of times where i've had rf interference you can you can hear it hear the cell phones you can hear some stuff like that so you should know i also don't like the design of the cold shoe shock mount the way that you have to tighten here it uh it comes loose really easy and you just tighten it up and you have to keep on tightening. You have to really tighten it down and keep it on top of it or else it slides back and forth and that obviously creates unwanted handling noise. Is this a Sennheiser MKH-50? No, not even close. But in my opinion, this will easily beat all other on-camera mics in its class. It's super handy, sounds good, feels good, looks good, has all that going for it. I even like the yellow little coiled wire it's pretty cool do i recommend the d3 pro why yes yes i do of the other options out there at this price this beats them all in terms of quality and functionality it's a great mic especially on a boom pole light and easy i also love the company deity they've got a really great youtube channel called sound 101 
it's awesome tips and tricks and stuff in order to do, you know, booming and sound work and all that stuff with their microphones or not. It's good to know. They're good lessons. And if you're a beginner, it's an awesome place to start. I'll include the link to that channel in the description below. Be sure to check it out. All in all, the D3 Pro is a great mic at a great price. And you know what they say. The first rule in government spending, why buy one when you can have two at twice the price? Bye now. End transmission. Hey, so um, in my haste to prove the uh, microphone's terrible wind handling, uh, I completely forgot to tell you the price. So I'm adding it here. You can get the Deity D3 Pro for 249 Canadian dollars or 195 US dollars. It's more for the kit to get all the other extras, but there you go. I forgot to add that. I probably forgot a lot of stuff. I was just dying to get this damn thing to to do what it always does when I'm filming with it outside, but it just wouldn't do it. So that's uh, Deity 1 and uh, SR Haddon 0.